So again, let's just do a really light um, drawing for the building and very, very light because that way you don't, again, you don't commit to the lines. So I quickly wrote down the list. Um, he's a very interesting guy because he really talks about like what's sort of obvious in a way. Uh, so one big thing about him is like it says color wheel, you know, you gotta use all the colors. Um, you gotta use complementary colors. You gotta use colors that are like next to each other in the color wheel. You gotta repeat colors and then you can use earthy colors or you can use glow colors and you can add a little touch of like a glowing color. And then color rainbow, which is like so cliche, right? And then he goes on to show all kinds of advertisements, all kinds of places where you have, you know, all the colors. You have red, yellow, blue, orange, green, and purple. And it's an interesting concept because actually if you start looking, you start seeing that in fact, you know, a lot of things do use all the colors. So in the uh, back of the syllabus, actually, there is a set of Prismacolor um, pencils that he recommends to do this kind of drawing. And I think in one of the handouts that I have, it's like step by step um, uh, which colors one should use when in doing this type of drawing. You know, do the trees first, do the building, etc. But now I don't know exactly what that is. Uh, but this set again includes most, most of the primary colors and the secondary colors. Um, and Prisma colors I think are a little better because they're a little softer. I think, I'm not sure if I talked about this one little principle. I think I definitely talked about it monochromatically for when we were doing shading on, on the cubes and spheres, where I said don't do zigzags and don't do um, also, you know, solids like that, right? But instead do uh, strokes. And when we do strokes, it's a good idea to leave white in between them because if we do a second color that overlaps, we get kind of like a lot of benefits. Uh, it's hard to see there, but you'll see it in the video, and that is that where the colors overlap, you get a little bit of that, you know, in this case, green, where the blue overlaps the yellow. Uh, but by leaving white, now the yellow is going to have its own color, so you're going to have parts of yellow and parts of blue. So that green, which is the um, just write it down here, um, yellow plus blue equals green. So this green part happens in the overlap area, but it really happens in a, in a way much better in the, you know, in our own um, perception of the color, which is more like what happens in the eye, right, psychologically. So that when you do that overlap, you get both things. And that's, it's, again, it's a very nice crisp mark. It's very clean, deliberate, uh, and fast. Um, uh, that was the little principle about, you know, fitting your colors uh, kind of towards the, towards the bottom. Uh, of course, fitting, you know, your colors with different strokes, you know, towards the outside. Uh, that was the little principle again there, you know, creating that contrast of sky and the ground. The ground is dark, the sky is light, so the building in that sense should be dark uh, and lighter at the bottom. Um, again, different type of uh, strokes for the tree. And uh, actually this does apply to your garden uh, drawing. Uh, that is, try not to... Um, you know, it's hard if you do a solid and then you want to fade it. Well, how are you going to fade that, right? Unless it's maybe with markers. So the trick, once again, is to go, you know, maybe with strokes and fade it like that. Uh, this relates to the rabbit poop. That is that if you have a spot that is isolated, you know, bring it back in with some kind of shading so that it doesn't feel so isolated. It's a good trick also if you make a mistake and you put something, um, you know, in a drawing that's like, you had a little example of a building and, you know, he was doing sky and then all of a sudden he did, oh, Jesus, what the heck is that? And it's like, now you're stuck with that. Well, you just put like a couple of little flag things and, you know, that is cool. So, anyway, there's always a way to fix things, but... Um, he had also very interesting thoughts about presentation, you know, like make the frame really big and the drawing really small and that will be you know, 
really important because the frame is so big. Um, whatever you do though, don't go to the edge. That really kind of kills the drawing because it's, it doesn't have any air to breathe, right? Uh, not too much contrast or too little contrast, right? So maybe this is like two to one, the proportion. Um, okay, I could go on here, but let's try starting the drawing. Um, so at this point, of course, yeah, if you want to make that building kind of a red, you know, if it's brick, why not, right? Uh, I'd like to start with the trees. And start with the lightest because because then you can go on top. So again, I'm just going to do like really, really um, simple strokes. Okay, it's almost like filling in, like it's almost like a coloring book. But again, it's going to take shape as we move forward. Okay, so I just did, you know, maybe the dark, and I'm just going to put some green here in the grass. It's almost like laying down sort of your base colors, right? So fade out a little bit. Um, if you can, keep your strokes, you know, as single strokes, but of course when it gets like big right here, you probably want to have to break them up a little bit. Um, so now I'm just going to do maybe another Another color. I'm using now another green. I don't know if you can tell on the on the screen, but and again, I'm just doing the the hard part here is really trying not to do like you know a block, a rectangle of color, right? Uh, but don't worry too much because you can always fix it later. You can always put you know squiggly lines around it. Um, so again, work your way from the middle to the outside. And of course, this drawing is like so basic, right, with the building, but if you have your own drawing, you know, it can be much more varied in terms of the shapes that are there. Um, okay, I'm just going to use, we always, we can always go back in with black and darker colors later. So now I'm just going to give it, oh, that's a bad color, just give it a little bit of um, edge here. And again, try not to. You know, lift your pencil quite often because then it forces you to start in a different spot. And I'm not doing Wendy's very well. Okay, that's a little better. Now with trees, it's a little bit easier in terms of like, well, you can't really make a mistake, right? So even if I'm doing lines that are not pretty dark, it's all right. Okay. So that gives me kind of the basis. So now I'm going to just pick a brown for my trunks. Uh, what we'll do later is we'll just, um, again, try not to make your trunks too straight. Um, can always go back with. Um, black and, and make give it a kind of a overall tone that's you know more uh, uniform okay um, okay so the building can be yellow red whichever uh, I'm just gonna make it uh, I don't know orangey looking and then based on the principle that he says use all the colors now one place where he says you can't use all the colors is in the sky because it starts looking a little muddy and a little no, a little weird. Uh, so I'm going to force my hand to stick to my 45 degrees, right? Boom, like that. So, and now this is going to look almost like garish here, right? Because it's like, oh my god, you know, this orange is like weird. Uh, but I'm just experimenting. Maybe a different orange, slightly different orange for the front. And maybe you do have, in fact, um, glass in, in, the, in this little section here. Okay. All right. Um, 
just because it's nice to work on the drawing overall all at once, what I'm going to do is put some sky now in, then go back and work all the parts. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have too many blues, so I'll, I'll just try to. work with what I have. Um, yeah, just keep your hand moving, you know, don't commit, just kind of, and then start filling in a little bit. Also, you don't have to fill in whatever clouds or the counter form of the clouds you're doing because that might be too much, so. And at this point, all these strokes you can see are almost like out of proportion, but it's, it's interesting, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, uh, maybe a little bit more here, because what I want to do is maybe stick the sun behind here somewhere later. You know, very dramatic, whatever. It's almost sunny, but quite not. Um, okay, I'll just I'll just do the road very very simply in this case with horizontal lines, but and um, so the principle that he says is like okay, use all the colors. So the idea would be that in the green now you start putting all the other colors. So I'm just going to do just that. So I'm going to take. Uh, a brown or a red, and I'm going to start sticking some red in there. You know, maybe not too much because, but why not? I mean, with the trees, and if you've been to the East Coast, of course, that's what happens to trees anyway. They're, they get all kinds of different colors. Um, So again, it's counterintuitive, but let's try it, right? Uh, let's see, I've used green, red, what else can I use? Maybe blue, oh yeah, blue of course, in grass, that's very important, as in bluegrass, of course. So, um, okay. So what it's doing is it's just making whatever blob of color that is more interesting, period, right? I mean, you know, we don't care what kind of grass it is. We probably imagine that it's regular, you know, English lawn type of, type of grass. But, um, and I'm starting to work on the shading a little bit harder now, right? I'm trying to give it a little bit of, but notice that over here, you know, on the top, these trees are kind of just a simple line now. It doesn't have a quite a definite area. So what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of shading just on the top of the trees, just to give it a little bit more of a demarcation between the sky, uh, between the sky and the trees. And that starts looking uh, kind of interesting. Okay. Now, what else could we do? We could put yellow in the building, for example, um, just to give it even a bigger glow. Maybe a little bit even in the front here. Um, there is a set of drawings done exactly in this style, but with markers, okay? That's a separate PDF or it's together, but you can, you can follow it if you wanted to try it with markers and I'll show you the or before and after done with markers too. Um, okay, the sky is a little bit, unfortunately, like I said, I don't have too many blues, so I'm just going to stick to that one. Uh, you could almost apply this principle of like dark, on, you know, shadow on the bottom and lighter on the, on the uh, top to the clouds or to the sky themselves here. So that's exactly what I'm doing. You know, for some reason it works, right? It's like, it looks interesting to do it that way. Um, okay, I'm almost ready to do some darker lines, but my my grass here is still a little kind of dead, so I need to make it pop a little bit. So I'm going to put some more brown, 
and I'm going to do the same with the tree here to give it a little more problem with my trees they look a little bit like a rectangle or boxwood edge you know like it's like a very geometric thing so I need to break it up a little bit um, okay I think I'm going to do because in the interest of time, I'm going to start doing some um, darker lines and I'm just going to use black, okay? Um, so let's see what happens with this. I'm going to start light because black now is really, really contrasty, so I don't want to be too, um, you know, too much different from the rest of the drawing. Because you can see, it just takes like a couple of little marks. I mean, it's unbelievable what we do as a kind of conceptual work with our brains, I guess, in our eyes. Um, and we accept that as, you know, okay. Um, well, you, one thing you can do is with, the, um, with an eraser, you could erase a, a little sliver of a reflection with uh, a little masking with a couple of uh, sheets of paper like that. Okay, I think we're missing maybe people, so maybe we'll just put a little bit. my trees here too just again you know give it a little and so you're always moving in right in this case you know the fading goes towards the middle and you try not to fill it in of course you try to really uh, and I mean you know we're almost done really um, so maybe my trees too need a little more Uh, and you can use the black even like this as a as a kind of oops, so I went over the person a little bit. You know, maybe there is a little patch of water here somewhere. Boom, there you go. Um, ducks, but that's a little hard to draw. Um, and now really it's a matter of like fading, fading out and getting the right right color my people are funky because their heads are really small actually Mike Lean says make their heads really big because then they'll look good okay so let's see that's black okay I'm gonna experiment I'm gonna put black in my sky no Oh, indigo blue, that's right. Oh, that's nice. Okay, good. So increase the contrast where the two places come together, like right there. Um, maybe a little more. Yeah, I feel like it's still a little light here. Maybe it just needs to have a little more there. So what's nice with this process is you can sort of go back and you know add. And then you can just like blah, 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 like that. Just really artistic, you know, artsy fartsy, I guess would be a one word, but not too much. It looks like poop again. Oh yeah, the sun, right? You can put the sun behind here somewhere. Um, that's what he calls color glow. Don't do color glow all over the place, otherwise it starts looking like polka dots. Um, but do a little bit because it makes the drawing more interesting. There. And even the trees could have a little bit of color glow, you know, like this little changing of the leaves. Um, I mean, you know, you could go on and on and just, I think I'm just going to leave it like that.
that because I quickly want to show you the um, the entourage thing. Maybe yeah, just a little bit more here. Yeah, and I think speed is nice because speed gives the drawing a nice, um, just kind of fresh, you know, look. Just give the people, even though my people are terrible, a little more character. <laughs> They're not completely 